Okay, gang. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? We are live today at 4 p.m. where we are bringing to you episode number eight. Uh, so those of you who are on online right now, say hi, just so that I know you can hear me loud and clear. Patricia Nelson from Kuala Lumpur. Looks like it may rain where I am now. It's, it's, it's raining here too and we're in Bangsa. So those of you who are familiar where we are, you can come visit us anytime. How's it going? So guys, um, uh, let's just rock and roll. But before I go jumping into that gang, uh, how many of you are having a good time now that we're in the recovery part of MCO? How many of you are excited that um, we're getting everything all coming back? You know, I can feel the buzz of uh, the city, Kuala Lumpur, you know, as we are opening up, schools have started. Uh, there's a lot of amazing traffic jams. Yeah, I'm so happy to welcome the traffic jams back again. How many of you are excited with the traffic jams? Say, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, again, before we go jumping in, let me just uh, show you my screen and then we can uh, rock and roll. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So guys, today's topic, we're going to talk about getting results with your team. Um, before I go jumping in, guys, can I just have um, a bit of a shout out, guys? How many of you are uh, business owners? You own and you run your own company. Tipeng, hi. Wellness to all. Oh my gosh. I love your greeting. Wellness to all. That's the best that we can wish for everybody. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Kwa Tipeng, for the amazing shout out. Thank you very much. Are you a business owner or are you um, part of a business? You're a leader or you're a manager in a company. Just give me a quick shout out here, guys, uh, so that I know uh, where you are coming from. Uh, today, we talk about getting results with your team. 
Um, a lot of people that are jumping on to this live stream, they could be running their own businesses, you could be managing two people or 200 people, this is going to be relevant. And uh, I like to say that this topic is very, very important, especially during uh, um, COVID-19, where there has been a lot of changes, a lot of restructure in organizations, and there are suddenly so many changes in businesses, Yeah, whether you run a micro, small, medium enterprise, all the way up to corporate, um, there has been a lot of changes. And how many of you are feeling, oh my gosh, with all these changes, it's been hard. Um, to motivate my team, you know, to drive my team forward, you know, for me, even my own motivation is affected. Now, that's normal, guys. If I may, that's actually pretty normal. So that's why we brought this topic here for you today. And so for those of you um, who are very good, Natalie Kong, managing, very good, you're managing, guys. Uh, give me a quick shout out. And uh, if I may, oh my gosh, Livia. <laughs> Much love, wah, wah, wah. all right. I love what you do, bringing light to everybody. Okay, quality ping worker safety officer, managing a team of officers and supervisors. Fantastic, thank you so much, T Ping. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, guys, thank you for engaging with me. And I would like to say, keep the engagement going, guys, because the more energy you give me, the more I give back. Okay, so, guys, we're going to have a, an amazing uh, one hour together. Okay, so I hope you have your notebooks ready. Take lots of notes, but I also want to encourage you to ask plenty of questions. All right. So today, this session is for you. If you don't want to ask these questions here, you can always PM me and myself and my team were very happy to help you out. Okay. So guys, we're going to go running into today's episode eight, getting results with your team. Okay. So as we go running into today, we want to talk a little bit about this big word here. Guys, can you see the word that's on your screen right now? It says trust all right so i want to share this uh uh true story i want to share this true story a client just spoke to me earlier in the week and and he said you know um and he actually came through one of our coaching programs recently concluded uh, and so we taught everybody how to coach and he says i immediately implemented something that you taught in your programs and so it was really really uncanny because he said he had a short-term project and the short-term project was about, you know, five, six, seven days. And I said, okay. And so he said he did some coaching. He asked some questions. And eventually, that seven-day project became three days. What he thought would be 15 people, manpower, to implement a seven-day project, then shrank to a three-day project with just six hit count. And I'm going... Wow. And he says, wow, coaching really works. I'm going, cool. How did you do that? So this is really interesting because, well, all I did was I just asked my team, is there a better way for us to do this quicker with less cost? And they went, mm, la, boss. And they came up with the answers. Now, I want to share this with you because that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about there is a basic premise, uh, ladies and gentlemen, leaders in the room, business owners, there is a basic premise of TRUST, which is trust. Trust that actually your employees do know what to do to improve their results. This is something that a lot of people um, they, they probably believe it, but they don't know how to enable it. So this is something that we are going to really talk about today. Okay. And one very interesting thing, because we, myself and my team as coaches, leadership and business coaches, we've, we coach so much on performance because at the end of the day, guys, right, those of you who are on this call, I'm, I'm going to say one thing. Okay. It is crucial to have performance, revenue, profitability, optimal costs. That is important in running a business. So I'm not going to say anything else because, yes, that is pivotal to a sustainability of a business. But if I may, I'm going to say one thing and this is like, what? So I want you to stay into the middle of today's uh, session where I'm going to share with you because managing performance is not really about performance okay i want you to write this down because managing performance is really about managing the motivation for performance okay now 
this for me i'm going to share with you because when i talk about managing performance a lot of people think all right it's got to be a set of kpis okay and it's got to you know it's a it's a certain specific expectation it is however i want to say this all right um, if you have managed employees before and you've managed team members before i mean even when you manage yourself okay uh, when you manage employees there are some days that the person can deliver like oh wow you know he's blowing your socks off and he's like wow uh pretty good and then there are other days that they 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 don't deliver so there are days when you can deliver there are days when you can now this is um this is one area that i just want to display to you that this is also a conversation of motivation what is motivation motivation can go up motivation can also come down so if i may managing performance is not really about performance because you are managing the motivation of performance okay and i'm gonna get into that okay so this is all question marks these are all the beliefs and disbelief so that's why i'm starting with this also another very important conversation here gang is leading versus managing okay i share a lot of this inside my coach foundation program which is, is a cafp but i'm gonna bring i'm gonna bring some of this mind-blowing information to you because a lot of people think leadership and management is actually the same some people may say actually marissa is a bit different now, now how many of you think it's the same that's okay leadership and managing uh, what's the difference uh? is it same or is it different anybody give it a go there's no right and wrong we're just going to have a lot of fun together all right it, is it same actually is different but i'm not sure how <laughs> that's okay too <laughs> that's how I, I coach and i start with what is your current understanding so anybody can you help me out is it same or different so if you think it's the same just put same if it's different, then just put different. Okay, tell me. All right. Not same, thank you. Kwa Ping, I love it. Not same, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, no right and wrong, hey gang. No right and wrong. It's not the same. Not the same, but I don't know why. I don't know how. Okay, anybody else? Give it a go. Livia, I know you're there. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Mm, okay, so the rest are waiting for answers. Huh? <laughs> okay, so if I... Okay, thank you, Livia. Different. Okay, so you guys are really spot on. Love it. Way home, leading a team and managing staff. Love it. Dion, oh my gosh, Dion is... Dion, you're logging in all the way from Mauritius. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you here. Natalie Kong, thank you. Not same. Wei Hong, thank you. Almost there. I, I like the way you think, Wei Hong. I love it. Okay, so if I may, and I want to share this with you, leadership and management is actually different, and I'm going to share exactly it. So please write this down, all right? David Devendran, not all those that are managing are leaders. Okay, fantastic. Uh, are we on video? Uh? This is live law. All right. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you so much, David. Not all those that are man not all those managing our leaders. And I'll give you another one, David. Not all that are uh, leading can manage. Okay. So fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to see you. So what is leadership and what is management? Okay. If I may, leadership is about managing the meaning. It's about managing the meaning and managing the clarity of your team. So when you lead, you're a leader, you are, uh, you are concerned around the meaning, the clarity, the direction of your team. Okay? So this is very important in leadership. In managing, all right, management is about managing resources okay so managing is about managing resources time team money and it's about getting things done and if i may there are leaders that are not very good managers yeah you know what i'm talking about they can sell you the story and the vision is amazing they will 
they will take 10 minutes and they'll blow you off of your feet because they are very, very good at selling the vision. They also probably have the passion to go along with it and probably a really amazing role model. So they have the leadership, but they may not have the management. When I say may not have management, maybe they are not managing. It needs to be somebody else. All right. So, and at the same time, you have people that are very, very good with managing, getting things done, talk about just following through the projects, timelines, budgets. Yeah. So they can execute, but sometimes they may lack leadership, which means the clarity of moving forward. All right. So leadership and management do come hand in hand, ladies and gentlemen, but they are not the same thing okay so this is very very crucial natalie right not all who are leading can manage not all who manage can lead thank you that's why sometimes if you have a lot of leaders in the room leaders when they all get together i don't know whether you've seen this before they all sound the same like wow they want to build this build that this is amazing that's a great idea wow fantastic thank you boom 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 there's an amazing amount of energy in the room but when the meeting is done bang who does the work it needs to be managers. Managers get things going. There's no point vision and clarity without execution. No, there's, there's, there's more to burn if there's a lot of this energy without execution. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, got You're really funny. So guys, this is the real difference between leading and managing. Now, depending on what position that you're in as a leader in your company or as an owner in your company, you need to start looking around you. Who do you have alongside you in order for you to get better and better results? Okay. This is very, very important. Okay. All right. Just a quick, um, if you guys hadn't already met me, I've been doing tons of lives, guys. I've been doing a lot of lives every week. I try to appear every hour. My name is Marissa Ng. I'm the founder and the CEO of the Spark Group Asia. You see me here. I'm in my office right now. Um, and we've been doing tons of, um, sharing and education so myself and my team of leadership intelligence coaches were hot on our heels and transforming the way businesses run and because of COVID-19 we have been pretty busy I will have to say we've been pretty busy with um, shaping the community with giving a lot of positive um, sharing online because it is not an easy time but there are also look at the end of the day Malaysians I feel personally we have the fighter spirit in us so of course it is challenging right now but I see a lot of Malaysians Asian entrepreneurs they run gyms they are yoga instructors and suddenly they're they're selling cakes you know they're selling durian people are just doing whatever it takes so for me I'm very happy to be part of this community and that's the reason why I'm here as well is uh, I'm 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 adding to that community so guys if you want to be um, part of that community please like us on the spark group Asia please go to our fan page you see lots of amazing stuff there will always come live and we'll have tons of sharing for you and we'll also run events um, when all of this uh, starts to die down and you know people are more comfortable coming out while implementing social distancing SOPs we are still going to be running our events so please stay tuned okay so lots of amazing stuff coming around okay um, a little bit of a commercial guys don't mind if I go into this I'm going to share a lot of information with you but guys I also want you to note that if you go to our website www.thesparkgroup.asia slash events you will see that we have an amazing leadership intelligence series which is a host of events uh, and all these are one and a half two hour sessions you do invest in it because we do share workbooks with you tons of material we should share a course with you um, and you'll have access to the coach that will be assigned for the event so please join us for this okay the next one that's coming up, guys, the earliest and the soonest, guys, please block your dates. Three weeks from now, we're going to be running one of our popular, actually, this has been a popular part of the series called Empower Your Leadership Intelligence. Hey, Emma. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you made it. Oh, my God. I see all my familiar friends, so many familiar names, so many new friends as well. So I really hope to see more of you. Okay. And so the empower your leadership intelligence, some of you that are on this Facebook live, I'm sure some of you actually has been into this program. And for me, guys, if you're the, if you're the sort of leader, you, you want to understand your strengths. You, you want to understand your struggle. You're not sure where to go, or maybe you have a very big decision to make. 
um, or you're, you're just a little bit confused or you're not sure where to go. I mean, as leaders and business owners, we do get there every now and then. And I, I can attest to that. There were so many times during MCO, I wasn't sure what I needed to do. So I reached out to my community. So this is your opportunity to build to build your leadership identity, leadership strengths, to be very clear with what your blind spots are and how you cultivate the change that you need for this for the for the next six months and 2021. So for those of you who really want to understand yourselves, this is a very, very powerful program because when you change and shift yourself, you also create better results by harnessing your strengths and your abilities. Okay. So this is a very powerful program. Join me on the 5th of August, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Okay, so are you ready to get into it, gang? Oh, I'm missing you too, Emma. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. I'm missing you too, all right? I haven't been on lives for a while. I just have been, been busy with some of the HRDF stuff that we've been doing. So now I'm back, okay? I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, so guys, if you can see my screen here, I, remember I told you just now that managing performance is not about managing performance. What did I say, guys? Managing performance is about managing the motivation for performance. Now, what I mean by that, and you see motivation is energy. Motivation is an emotion. And emotions, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes can be high, sometimes can be low so if i may managing performance and managing for results means you have to go beyond results okay so if i may managing performance by going beyond results means that a lot of time as leaders we're just managing the results what we should be doing is managing beyond that, i.e. managing the why, the purpose, the bigger picture. So if, I, if you can take a look at my screen, yeah? Can I, can, I, can I show you my, can you see my finger? Can you see my finger, guys? All right, you can see my finger, right? My finger is so big, you can't see my face. It's just taking on the whole thing, right? But if I may, I'm showing you my finger. I'm showing you my index finger. Does that make sense? But aside from that, you have no idea what else I'm showing you. But if I do this, can you see my whole hand now? Oh, Marissa is showing me a hand. Okay, now if I go back way more, can I show you my whole arm? Can you see my arm? Can you see part of my upper body? Can you see it's attached to my head? And she goes, ah, that's what she was showing me. So if I may, this is a very powerful occurrence of seeing the bigger picture. Most of the time for employees, if I may, and I just had this conversation this morning, when employees don't deliver performance, they don't deliver results, the biggest question is, do they know what it is? Do they know what their expectations are? Okay, and this is actually designing a good specific set of KPIs, number one. Now, assuming... You guys have that in place, all right? How many of you have your how many of you have your KPIs set down? All right, it's in a piece of paper and I can see it. Okay, good. If you have your KPIs in place, then the next question I'd ask you is this. Because when you manage performance, you're not managing the result itself. You're managing the why of the results. You're managing the purpose. So if, if you look at this screen, you look at this screen, I put a picture frame. If you look into the picture frame, all you see is one part of the mountain. You see a little bit of that earth. You see some, you see some small growth at the edge of a mountain. But if you take away that frame, can you see the ocean? Can you see the mountain? Can you see the beach? Now, this is very powerful because when it comes down to leading your team, what is more motivating than the result itself is the reason for the result, i.e. the why. The purpose and that's where sometimes I feel as leaders um, because we're so busy we fall short of communicating the big hairy audacious why instead of just the KPIs and the outcomes be very clear to communicate this is where we're at guys we're coming out of uh, uh, the movement control order COVID-19 has 
consumed a lot of our results for most part of year 2020. We do need your help. We, we are aware that the restructures in the salaries had to be done. Yeah. Or else we all won't survive. But if I may, we can do it stronger and we can support more community by doing this. So you are sharing the why and the purpose beyond the result. Although the result is important, but you're going beyond that. That's important because the purpose carries the motivation. Is that making sense, guys? So when you talk, when we talk about coaching for results and coaching for performance, a lot of people just stop at the result. Okay. Now I, I like this picture very much. All right. Do you know who that guy is? Do you know who he is? Okay. I, I'm sure most of you do. All right. In fact. A lot of people like this guy compared to the current guy. Okay, oh, I won't. I won't share so much information, or else this live stream will become like three hours long and start talking about politics. Okay, so don't go into that. But if you take a look at what he's doing over here, gang, all right, he's actually what is he doing? He's listening, and as he listens, I really love this photo because, and I picked it because when he's listening, he's doing this. Hmm? What is he doing? He's actually, and I like that. In fact, I do that because for me, listening, because we have two ears and we have one mouth, sometimes when we listen, are we listening to answer somebody or are we listening to understand? And so what I tend to do is when I really want to listen, I say, okay, Marissa, mm-hmm. Shut up, please. <laughs> so that's what Obama is doing. He's going, mm, shut up. So if I may, one key area of getting great results with your team yeah, is to be able to shift and listen. If I may, uh, when you are working with your team members, there are two modes that you can be in. You can be in the problem mode, all right? You can be in the problem mode. Thank you so much, Emma. How about managing risk? Does it fall under managing uh, beyond results as well? Thank you very much. I'll get to that. Emma, I love it. Mwah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, you can be in the problem mode where you are talking about problems. And uh, Emma, this might be related to the question that you're asking over here. You can be in the problem mode or you can be in the solution mode. Sometimes if you listen hard enough, gang, you can hear that the conversation continues to go round and round about the problem. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you hear hard enough, how come I'm hearing more and more about the problem? Now, ladies and gentlemen, Emma's question. Is it bad to listen about the problem? No, no, it's not. Okay. The challenge is when you continue having discussions about the problem. And if I may, sometimes you have more and more discussions about the symptoms of the problem. Who was affected? What happened? I lost how much of money? Blah, blah, blah. This client was unhappy. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. You can continue having those discussions or once you have enough discussions about the problem, you've identified the risks. Okay, you need to move over to the second mode. The second mode is called the solution mode. And if I may, the solution mode helps you to address the risks that you have. A lot of people stay in problem mode, which is they stay in the risk mode. But as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Can you grow your business by managing risks? Because in growing a company, when you grow a company, you are going outside what we call a comfort zone. When you grow, you are going to a place that you've never been before. So if you're managing risks, you're managing the gaps, you're managing, ooh, I've not done that before. Ooh, this can go wrong. Ooh, that might go wrong. If you're doing that, you won't be able to take steps forward. So at some point, risk conversation needs to move into growth conversation. And that is the conversation as you shift from problem mode to solution mode. Now, what Obama is doing over here is that he is also getting his team members, his people that he leads to move from problem mode to solution mode. Okay, I understand the problem. What do we do about it now? Does that, does that make sense? So you're shifting, but you're listening. And if I may, you want to get your employees to shift as well. And then 
you listen. Does that make sense? All right. So I hope that answers your question, Emma. All right. Because it was just totally alive with what I was going to talk about. All right. So thank you very much. I hope that was clarity for you, Emma. Just let me know. Okay. And guys, if you guys have more questions, please, like Emma, pop it right into the comment section and I will go right to it. Okay. So shifting and listening, but listening more than talking. Okay. Now, if I look at something on my screen here, guys. How many of you look at those two words and you go micro versus macro manage? Oh, guys, let me ask you, which one is better, micro or macro? No right and wrong, gang. No, no right and wrong. Tell me what you. <laughs> oh yes, thank you, thank you so much. You know. Um, one of the things my mentors shared with me, you know, is uh, Marissa, there are no uh, silly questions. And then he took back his he took back his statement. He said, oh, actually, Marissa, there is one uh, silly question. I go, oh, what is it? Oh, the question that doesn't get asked. And I'm going, oh, ha, 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 ha. I started laughing. That's true. Because if you don't ask a question, it becomes a silly one. <laughs> So thank you, Emma. You're amazing. I love it. No silly questions. So guys, let me ask you this question. Which one is, which one would you like to do more? Micro or macro? No right and wrong. Just tell me. Which one is easier to do? Micro or macro manage? Macro, thank you, Jolene. Macro manage easier. Everybody else? Let me just hear from the crowd. Ah. Which one is easier, micro or macro? Come on, everybody. Oh, is that me? <laughs> Deep thing, fantastic, macro, easier. Huh? Okay, very good. Anybody else going once? Very good, fantastic. Keep it coming, guys. Or oh, the rest are too busy writing notes. Huh? Micro or macro? No right and wrong, gang. Ha! Emma, easier is micro. Ah. Wow. Okay. Keep it coming, guys. No right and wrong. Okay. So if I may, between micro and macro manage, and this is micro. <laughs> micro is going in for the kill. Oh, my God. Tipe, I love it. Livia, thank you. Macro easier. Huh? Depends on the number of people to manage. Dion, love it. Mwah, I love you. Okay. This is awesome. Your replies are awesome. I love you guys. Okay. So this is the thing about micro and macro is it is always easier to macro manage. I would say this as well. I love macro managing. But how many of you know what I'm talking about? We do macro managing and then what happens? Two weeks later, three weeks later, we realize, oh my gosh, I macro managed. I delegated with one line or a single email. Three weeks later, nothing gets done. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I should have done it myself. And then that's where t -Pain goes in for the kill. <laughs> okay. So if I may, um, macro management does have its pros and cons. It saves us a lot of time and energy. But it also does present us with a lot of problems that we only find out later. Okay. Micromanagement, on the other hand, okay, is, is, is good. You get to follow up with the specifics and execute everything down to the T, down to the details of how you want it. But it is incredibly tiring. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's incredibly tiring to micromanage. Okay. Now, if I may, this is a very, very important science and art. I teach this to everyone, business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders. So I want you to write this down. Okay. When you micro and macro manage, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about the person. Okay. What you are micro or macro managing is the task. Is the task. When I say you're micro or macro managing the task, you are you are micromanaging when the person you're working with has a low maturity to that task. I want you to write this down. And you can macromanage somebody that has a high maturity to the task. 
Now, you notice I use maturity. It's not about age. Oh, 50 years old, 20 years old, senior manager, junior executive. I'm not talking about that kind of maturity. I'm talking about maturity to task. You see, a lot of people make this mistake as well. I just hired a senior manager, so I'm going to macro-manage that guy. Now, now that is the mistake because, and, and you'll find out, Six months later, hey, I pay so much money for this manager. This fella didn't even give me anything. There's nothing. And a lot of people that we coach, they actually come back to us and say, hey, I paid so much money for a senior manager. Shouldn't I be able to macro manage? And then what happened? Huh? Okay. If I may, macro and micro managing is not about the person. It's about the task. And it is about their maturity to set tasks. So, you can be working with somebody that has been in your company for a very long time and so you can micromanage, right? Now, but this person, let's just say he or she has been in a company for 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 20 years, but you present them with a task, okay, where they have low maturity. The task with low maturity means, and I want you to write this down, low maturity means they have not presented evidence to you that they can do it that means if the task is new even if they've been with you for 10 years and the task is new to them you know they've not set up a website before you know that they've not completed a project proposal of this size you know that they've not presented this topic before then the first thing that you have to do is micro manage is that making sense guys and when can you macro manage is when this uh, said employee, 20 or 40 years old, manager or junior executive, this person has presented evidence that they know what to do. Does that, does that, then you can macro manage. See, so guys, if I may, micro and macro managing becomes a problem for leaders, and I hope it's not going to be a problem for you anymore because you're on this live stream event, is that it's a problem because a lot of people look at micro to the person. This person, she, I need to micromanage. Okay, that person, he, I need to micromanage. So you micromanage the whole thing. But little do we realize, you're not macro or micromanaging the person. You are micro and macro managing what they do. And so even if they've been in your company for a long time, sometimes you still need to go down to micromanaging because they've never done it before. And see, this is the thing. You have to tell them that that's how you do things. That's how you manage. That's how you lead. And you need to tell them that. So then when, when you micromanage, I don't know about you, some of you leaders in here, you micromanage people and then they get all upset. Why are you micromanaging me, huh? Yo, you got nothing else better to do, huh? excuse me. Yeah, so I know I've heard about all this before and then you oh my god okay I'll back off you back off on an important project and then three weeks later it explodes BAM and then you're like oh my gosh I said micromanage but by then it's too late so if I may you do want to position it up front to your team that you will micromanage but this is where because I've not seen sufficient evidence of you being successful with this task and people go hmm, yeah you make sense huh is that making sense, guys? So this is very important, okay? How many of you now understand the difference? You know which one to do. So can I ask you this question? Micro or macro better? Trick question, huh? Trick question, hello, guys. Micro or macro better? What's your answer? Yo, oh my gosh. Are you guys all still there? Oh, dear. I hope I'm not short sendiri. Sorry, Dian, short sendiri it is a is a Malaysian term. Short sendiri means I'm entertaining myself. Are you guys okay? Are you guys there? Hello. Yes. <laughs> Deeping, you need both depending on the task. Thank you, Emma. Understand both and depending on the task. That's right. That's right. Don't pin micro or macro to the person. Fantastic, Emma, yay, both. Very, very good. Okay, so I'm very, very glad I wasn't entertaining myself just now. Both David, Devendran, very good, both depending on the situation and the task at hand. All right, you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so if I may, I bring you to the next very powerful. You see, we talk about getting great results, all right? <laughs> thank you. 
We talk about getting great results, guys. And if I may, I hand on heart believe that employees can self pivot. You see, and this is the thing. As leaders, we are all very, we are all, um, uh, that we should be, and I'll use a should be, we should be very good at coaching people. Okay. When I say coaching people, it means that we believe the natural premise that the person we are working with actually has the answers. They have the answers. They have the solutions. They have the know how. Our job as leaders is to access it. Does that make sense? Fantastic, Dian. Low and high, which is very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if I may, as great coaches, and, and you know, Harvard Business Review actually wrote an article of the 10, uh, 10 skills required by future leaders in the next 30 years. And of the 10 skills, there were things like futuristic, there were things like visionary. The, one of the skills in that 10 is the skill of coaching. And that's why we are teaching people how to coach. A lot of people make this mistake thinking, hey, coaching isn't it for just like people like Marissa as a third party profession and then they're outside the business. No, no, no. Coaching is not a, 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 a profession, but it is a skill. What skill is it? Is it? It is a skill of empowering others with their own abilities. And therefore, when you want to get great results with your team members, the very important premise, when your employees come to you and they say, I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh, the customer is outside and is asking for a refund, really pissed off. And I don't know what to do. Most of the time as leaders and business owners, what do we do? When we're presented with a problem, what do we do, guys? We go straight into, ah! Oh, I know what to do and then we go into solution mode. We go into, so we go into that mode of spitting out the answer versus asking. And you see, if I may, questions are the best gateway to answers, to blind spots, to ideas, to accountability. And I want to say this accountability, ownership. Accountability and ownership is very, very important because the answers are coming from them. Questions, and, and if I may, you can be the one, okay, I know the answer. This is what you do with that nasty customer. But they may think otherwise. They may think, no, that's not what I would do. But because you're the boss and you said do it, therefore I will. So if I may, questions help you to see the current understanding of your employees. And if I may, when you ask questions, you enable your employees a chance to self-pivot. Just like that example that I gave you at the beginning of this business, and they have, I think, 45 employees, and they run some of the most prestigious sports events, including Sea Games and Sukma. And their business is entirely... Uh, related to precision and efficiency because they run a clock timing system. And so all the CEO did was he coached the team. He said, okay, I don't know the better, but if we're going to run this event, all right, if it's going to take 15 days how uh, and uh, 15, uh, seven days and uh, 15 manpower, how do we reduce the time and how do we use less manpower costs? And all his supervisors did was spat out the answer and he went, oh, that's a good thought. Okay, let's try that. Let's see how you go. Thank you very much. Great suggestion. Great suggestion. So employees do, as long as you ask them, they do know the way forward, but we have to, T-R-U-S-T, trust that they can. So this is very important. Employees can self -evaluate. I would also like to put this into the, the mix guys and just to make it more confusing some of you might also so also say you know hey i ask my employees questions yeah but they always say they don't know they don't know i don't know lah i don't know lah how many of you know what i'm talking about uh you are the boss lah you say lah you know lah yeah okay you need to ascertain 
if your employees are just uh, shrugging off the responsibilities because sometimes they don't want to answer your questions because they know you're going to hold them to the answer. Does that make sense? So you need to ascertain that it could be that, number one, okay, guys, if you're writing this down, number two, it could also be another issue where they really don't know. Lah. So no matter how many times you ask them, they're like, huh, boss, tak tahu lah. I really don't know. Lah. Okay. <laughs> if I mean don't know means don't know. Lah. <laughs> so if you actually have that, and I want you to write this down, knowledgeable employees are easier to coach. Okay, now what I mean by this also is you can coach people that have the knowledge. So if I may, then this is another subset of information. Sorry, that's a whole other conversation, but another subset is also this. You need to make sure that you are increasing your employees' knowledge level. So if they are not learning, they're not increasing their knowledge pertaining to customer service, customer uh, wow factors, or digital marketing, if they're not increasing their knowledge, no matter how hard you coach them, but because they're working on a limited knowledge base, they will not be able to answer your questions and self-pivot. So if I may, guys, um, you need to ascertain whether your employees are, number one, they're just sh shrugging off responsibilities. Don't know, la, boss, you say, la, you say, la. Or number two, they really don't know. That means you also need to invest in training and knowledge building. All right? So this is very, very crucial. Okay? Because, guys, if I, if I could, okay, um, I really love uh, this, the, the words that you see on the screen. Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower. And, and, and I love, I even love the one right next to it. Because uh, where I come from, leadership is about creating more leaders. If your organization creates more followers, oh, that's not that hard. One of the one of the speakers I attended recently, you know what he said? If you want to create followers, all you need is a job description and a salary package. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is brutal. <laughs> but it's almost the truth. Because if you create more followers, guess what? You're the only person thinking. You're the only person coming up with solutions. You're the only person that's driving and pushing this thing forward. Now, how many of you do feel that way? That, hey, if I have other leaders around me, things get easier. Imagine sharing the burden instead of pulling it all by yourself. If that's what it feels. Yeah, Emma. Yeah, I love it as well. And and this is this is important in your organization. It doesn't matter what business you run, whether you've got extended team, you know, you work with freelancers, or you're you're in a network marketing company, or you're in a licensed franchise model, or you're in a good old there are full time employees. Guys, if your organization, your system is not creating leaders, it's going to get very, very tiring for you. So when you create more leaders instead of followers, they are going to help you share the burden. And if I may, that's part of coaching and growing your team. So guys, I just want to share with you a very, very quick model. If you can take a look at my screen here, guys, some of you have seen it before. I think Dion would totally like, I know this model. All right. So Guys, this is called the axis of change, all right? And this is part of neurosemantics uh, under Dr. Michael Hall, yeah? And if I may, when you coach and grow your team, there are four major areas. So I want you to write this down, okay? So when you coach and grow your team, number one, you need to be aware of their motivation. So as a leader, our job is to know how to, to inspire and motivate individuals. And you see, motivating is not a pom-pom. It's not a pom-pom thing like, hey, you can do it. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. Motivation is beyond that. How do you use your vision, your mission, your culture to motivate your team? And see, this is all part of the skill of coaching. Number two, the decisions that you and your team make. And sometimes as leaders, we find ourselves making those decisions without the buy-in of our team. And then therefore they say, you made that decision. We didn't. So well, I'm just going to go along with whatever you have. Now, if I'm <laughs> Dian, very good. Thank you. Nice one. 
if I may, making the decisions with your team is very important. That's also part of coaching. How do you enroll them? How do you get their buy-in? Number three is actualizing. For me, actualizing is critical because you are co-creating results. You see how I use these words, co-creation, because a lot of this, uh, leaders and entrepreneurs, we are creating the plan and then we are briefing them about the plan. So we create it and then we, we delegate it. Actually, you want to build a part of the plan and you want to do it with them. That's called co-creation because team members take a lot more ownership and accountability when you do it with them. They were part of the process of formulating it versus dishing it to them. And the last part is number four on coaching and growing your team is integrating the change. Because you see, you can create change. Well, how many of you know what I'm talking about? That change needs to be integrated. It needs to be reinforced. So how do you practice celebration, review, and reinforcement strategies to keep good change and then to change areas that are not constructive? So the integration part. So if I may, this is a very important part that we deliver in our Coach Foundation program. So for those of you, we had just finalized this program last week, guys. And it's a very interesting program for those of you who are leaders inside this room. And you're thinking, I need to know how to coach my team. Guys, um, it is actually three powerful webinars. It is pretty intense. But if I may... Once you complete the program with flying colors, okay, once you complete the program, you actually become an alumni in our program. When you become an alumni, you actually get to review, un, you get to do an unlimited review of this program four times a year. So we run this program four times. We just finished the last one. The next one that we're running is in September. So guys, please book your date, 1st, 3rd, and 8th September. The first webinar that we do is on change. So uh, leaders in the room, if you are looking at bringing change to your employees and you're looking at, no, not just your employees, but bringing change to yourself, okay? This is very important because you are going to learn the psychology, how people change, yeah? And you're going to look at their motivations. You're going to look at how do you promote change. You're also going to look at what stops change. If you are in the business of, you're in leadership position, you are in the business of people. So which means you need to understand people. Now, this is very, very powerful because I have a lot of people that are inside this program. They are CTOs. They are programmers. They are people with a lot of technical knowledge, yeah, accountants, lawyers, yeah, risk management. So they've got a lot of technical knowledge. And they've been promoted to places where suddenly it's not about their technical abilities to, to do the work themselves anymore. Suddenly it's about them managing people to do the work. So they've suddenly been shoved into the business of people from a technical position. This is very powerful because we give you a systematic framework on how to understand and manage people. Webinar number two is very powerful as well. We introduce your leadership intelligence. So all of you have your own leadership abilities. You have your strengths. You have your struggle. Everybody's the same. We're not perfect. But when we teach you how to understand using this leadership intelligence tool, this comes along with a 26-page report. So once you enroll, we actually give you a 26-page report of who you are. All right. And during this webinar number two, we'll go through it with you. Okay. We'll teach you how different people behave. All right. Webinar number three is the most, uh, for me, it's epic. Today, if you enjoyed today's program, you're going to really enjoy webinar number three, where we teach you how to coach. We are going to share nine core coaching skills with you in that one webinar. It is intense, tons of role play, tons of fun. Okay, So for me, um, if you guys are uh, looking at enrolling, you can enroll one webinar at a time. That's up to you. Okay, but If you want to go for one webinar, I just want to choose one, number two, or number three. It's 647 
two webinars is 1097. But if you go for all three, which for me, I suggest all three, um, it is only 1597 plus a lifetime membership. So that's the alumni status that I told you about. So I've got a lot of people that are running into this program. So aligned with the pathway in moving. Oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need to hear in building my ambassadors. Yes, yes and yes. That's true. Guys, the skill of coaching goes beyond I'm just coaching full-timers. If you are coaching people that are not full-time, you're not paying salaries, even more so you better learn to coach because you're not paying them a salary every single month. That means they are driven by your purpose. They're driven by your love for your business. They're driven by the vision of what you set out for even more so. Okay, so love it. Thank you very much, Livia. Okay. So if I may, 1597 for a lifetime membership, but if I may, stay tuned guys, hang in a bit, hang in a bit. Those of you who are interested, gang, I'm going to cut this price and um, today only in the next 48 hours, the 1st, the 3rd and the 8th of September, if you are a leader wanting to step up, okay, and you want to grow, this whole thing is only 1197 and remember, it's also a lifetime membership, okay? Now stay tuned, hang on a bit. We also have people that are fast action takers. If you take action fast, it does not matter whether you are from Singapore. We just finished the program and we had people logging in from Singapore and Philippines. So guys, by all means, everything is online now. So it's amazing. You get to meet crazy people from all over the region. And we have some really super fast action takers, gang. If you take action fast, it is only for the first um, three packs and valid for the next two hours, only 897 ringgit. We literally slashed it by half. So those of you who are interested, not many people get this special promotion. If you are keen, please click on the form, guys, and I will be so happy to coach you to coach. All right. So this is a very powerful skill. Okay, so for those of you who are interested, please let me know, gang. We are doing a lot of these amazing live streams. We've bought amazing information. Thank you, gang, for being around uh, right until the end. I'm very, very happy. Hey, guys, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know. I'm happy to take any uh, questions to clarify. Uh, and those of you who enjoyed today's sharing, please start typing in. What are some of your takeaways today? What did you learn from today's live stream? You know, and, and people know they've attended all my weekly live streams ago. So it's a coaching session by itself. Yeah. And all in within one hour, we treasure the time that business owners and leaders put in um, to join these sessions. So we assure you that we give you a lot of tips, a lot of information. Um, I've seen a lot of um, uh, loyal fans, you know, like uh, Emma and uh, Livia. All of you are amazing people that continue to follow our information, our, our knowledge sharing. So guys, please write down some of your takeaways from today. And for those of you who enjoyed today's session, and you go, all right, I think I have friends that need to attend this. Yeah, please share. Uh, please do what you can to just share this on your page. We'd be very happy. And for those of you who want more information, please uh, like our page, the Spark Group Asia, and uh, we will keep informing you of more events that will run. Yeah, so Louise, take away today. Oh, thank you, Louise. The problem versus solution mode. Awesome, awesome. And sometimes all we need to do is just ask our team, just ask them. So can you shift? Shift, please. Oh, and they'll, they'll shift away themselves. All right. So fantastic. Thank you, Louise. Brilliant. Guys, please keep sharing your learning. Truly appreciate this. For me as a coach, um, it helps me when I understand what you've learned um, because I can continue as a coach and an educator to bring more information to you. Quan Tiping, <laughs> listen and talk less. Oh, gosh. That's also a lesson that I've learned myself. You know, sometimes we have all the answers. And we do. As leaders and business owners or entrepreneurs, we did get far in our career by knowing a lot. But we get to a point where knowing a lot 
gets us stuck in our jobs. It gets us stuck in our work. So yes, Kwati Ping, I love it. Thank you. Emma, micro and macro manage. Love it. Mwah. Fantastic, Emma. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Guys, micro and macro managing. One, one first and then the other, but know which one you're doing when. David Devendran, thank you. Miss Marissa, the Spark Group Action. Love the point of KPIs plus outcomes plus why. The why is normally missing in the KPIs and the outcome setting for employees. Brilliant. Mwah, I love it. Thank you so much. It's amazing. Guys, co uh, managing performance is beyond performance. That's what, make, that's what turns you from a manager into a leader because leaders know how to coach. And coaching is about coaching purpose. So people have this strong drive to perform beyond. They have this strong ownership. And if I may, a lot of people make this mistake thinking employees just have less ownership and less accountability. I don't agree with that. I've seen business owners that have very little ownership. Doesn't mean they run the business. They, they have a whole lot. They own the business. They have a whole lot more ownership. No, that's not true. So if I may, employees, when you when you get them enrolled in your vision, you get them enrolled in, in your passion, they will go above and beyond. I've seen that. I've seen that in some amazing people that work for organizations. Okay. Thank you so much, David. <laughs> Thank you for the sharing. Guys, please keep sharing. Keep the questions coming, gang. Um, and uh, if you have friends that are challenged with uh, running their businesses and leading and managing the business, do tag them here. We'll love that. Uh, and please, guys, I hope to see you in more of our events. In fact, tomorrow I'm running um, a CEO strategy session called Disrupt or Be Disrupted. So if you can join me tomorrow, um, I will be around. I will run that session personally. Many a time for getting to manage motivation. Fantastic. <laughs> and guys, if I can ask you, if you had a good time today, please uh, um, also leave us a review on Facebook. Uh, go to Google and leave us a review. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, a lot of people don't know about our work unless you talk about it. So I am asking you to share so that you can add more value to the SME and business community. Yeah, sharing is caring. So guys, um, without further ado, I'll, um, I'll just leave you here today. Thank you. Have a great day ahead and rest of the night. Have an awesome uh, end of the week coming and uh, keep applying. Keep staying positive and I hope that you get tons of amazing results as our, our economy um, recovers. I wish you all the best in generating more and more clients, more and more customers. I, I wish you the strength and the wisdom. Yeah, It's not easy for many of us as entrepreneurs. Um, for me as a coach, I am dealing with a lot of businesses that I'm advising night and day, night and day to help them to stay sustainable. So for me, this is also part of my service to all of you to keep serving this community. So I hope this information just goes far for you, even if it's just an hour. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Have a, have a great night, guys. Take care and uh, bye for now. Thank you, Emma. Great session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Take care.